Hello and welcome to week three. We've made it to week three already and it is day one of week three. Um, we're so excited. We're still um, having fun teaching these different lessons and I hope that you are learning a lot from them. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, we're going to get started with our agenda up here in the back, right? We're, um, we have reading language arts, okay? And then we're going to go over math and then our science, okay? So for reading language arts, we're gonna go ahead and start with our activities. And if you're looking in your lesson plan, we are on page 17, and um, it's reading language arts day one, week three, day one, okay? And we're gonna get started with find specific sounds, page 46. So we've already actually done some of these activities, but uh, again, we're just like, we have to use the activity more than once so that the child can already know what is expected, okay? So you can actually do them every day if you want. It's up to you. Okay, so we're going to get started. So we're finding specific sounds in conversations, in television um, programs, or radio stations. So you want your child to get used to listening for those sounds, okay? So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be using a book, okay? So you can also use a book, okay? So um, our book is called Goldie, Goldilocks Has Chicken Pox, okay? So... I'm going to give you the sound. So as a parent, you would have to give your child a sound to listen for. Okay? So we're listening for the p, the initial p sound in some of these words. So I'm going to go pretty slow so that you can listen to the words. And as I'm reading, say, nope, that's not it. Nope, 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 and so on, right? So at the end, you can go ahead and tell me what were some words that had the initial sound of p, okay? Goldilocks has chicken pox from head to toe. Word polka dots. Where did you get them, father said, but Goldie only shook her head. And here is Goldie and dad, right? So what were some words that began with the sound p? Let me read it one more time. Goldilocks had chicken pox. From head to toe were polka dots. Where did you get them? Father said, but Goldie only shook her head. What are some words that begin with the p sound? Okay, so you should have said pox, as in chicken pox, and polka, like in polka dots. Okay, they both begin with p, pox, polka, right? Okay, so I'm going to, let's do another one. Goldilocks had chicken pox. They started out as tiny spots. Then rosy bumps began to form and Goldie's temperature was warm. On her tummy were 24. How, which of these words, I'm sorry, I didn't even give you the sound. Okay, for this page, I want you to focus on the sound t. t. So here we go again. Goldilocks had chicken pox. They started out as tiny spots. Then rosy bumps began to form, and Goldie's temperature was warm. On her tummy were 24. Which of these words begin with the t? Okay, let me read it one more time. Goldie locks had chicken pox. They started out as tiny spots. Then rosy bumps began to form, and Goldie's temperature was warm. On her tummy were 24. What were some words with t? 
okay, you should have said temperature, which is a long word, right? Tiny was another one. Tummy and 20. 20. Okay, so that's the activity called finding specific sounds. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next activity, which is on page 49. And this one, we are focusing also on beginning sounds. Remember, get used to that word initial. The initial sound is the beginning sound, the first sound. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a list of words and you are going to tell me the sound that, that, that all those words have in common. Okay, so the first one is book, baby, bump, beach. What sound is the same in all of these words? B. Very good. They all have the B sound. Now I want you to think of your colors, right? The different colors in your crayon box. And I want you to tell me which color begins with the B. Good. You should have said black. You could have said blue. And you could also have said brown. And I'm sure there's others when you have like that big box. They have all kinds of colors nowadays. But those were our basic three colors, right? Let's try another one. Okay, listen for the beginning sound or the initial sound. Yo-yo, yarn, yes, yell. What sound is the same in all of these words? Y. Yeah. Very good, y. Yeah. Now what color can you think of that begins with that sound as well? Y. Yeah. Very good, you should have said yellow. Yellow begins with the sound y, yeah, like in all the other words, right? The next group of words, let's try one more. And this one's gonna be very brief, ready? Red, rooster, Radio. What sound do all of these words begin with? R, right? R, they all begin with the R. And what color begins with the R? You should have said red. Very good. So that is the activity called Beginning Sounds on page 49. Great job. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the story of the week, right? Or not of the week, of the day. It's on page 83, and it's called Can You See in the Dark? And this is a nonfiction book. That means that this book has a lot of information, right? So when you look at the story, it looks like it could actually be a fiction book, right? Maybe about somebody going camping, but it isn't. It's a nonfiction book because all the information in the story is going to be facts, right? But they kind of um, relate it to your life. Okay, so it has some drawings or some pictures that look like it could be fiction, but it's a nonfiction book. Okay, so basically throughout the story it gives you scenarios or situations in people's lives where you can actually see darkness, right? Or you can actually experience darkness. So what we want you to do is to read the story and tell us about one or more things that you learn from the story and maybe draw a picture about it. Okay, you can do that again in your composition book, which is your black spiral, because it has a lot of pages in there. Okay, so find a page and tell us about what did you learn about this story. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to math. And for math, you're going to need pages 210 and 211, 210, 211. And we are still working with word problems, right? 
It's a very different way of working with word problems, but again, we're trying to get you ready for first grade. So this is just a different way of seeing information. Okay, so I went ahead and copied what I have on my paper. I went ahead and copied it on a big paper so that you can see it clearer. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and get started. It says, Jeremy had seven big rocks. So again, I like to underline my information. And he had eight little rocks in his pocket. How many rocks does Jeremy have? Okay, so we know we are adding, we're putting together. Now, the instructions tell us something else. So basically what we've been doing before is giving the answer. Well, now they're giving us answers and we're being the teachers. We're checking to see which one is, our, which one is correct and which one isn't, okay? So that is our goal for today. It's a circle all the student work that correctly matches the story, okay? So we have A through F to check, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started with this one. Again, it was seven and eight little rocks, right? So it's seven plus eight equals 15. Well, let's see if they did it correctly. Remember that this is a 10 frame and only 10 fit in there, okay? That doesn't mean you automatically just draw 10 circles. You're going to use your problem to put it in here. So we have seven big rocks, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that correct? Yes, so this part, correct, right? And then we have eight little rocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that correct? Yes, right? And then if I add them together, does it give me 15? So we know this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Is that correct? Yes. So. I am going to circle A because that problem was worked out correctly, right? Let's go ahead and move on to B. And I'm sorry, in B I did not circle all of it. So they circled the top and then five of them on top. Three, four, five. So this is what you have in your paper, right? So we're going to have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yes, that's correct, right? And then they have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, and it does give me 15, but let's look at the problem. Remember that when we work with our 10 frame, right? When we, when we join 10, we do not separate them. We use a whole. So for right here, we would have circled all of the seven and then added the rest, right? Seven, eight, nine, ten. I should have gotten three from here. Here, they got a little bit from here and a little bit from there. So right away, I know that is not correct, okay? We cannot just grab from here and there. We have to use a whole and then add what they need to make a ten. So that is not correct, okay? In letter C... Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is that what we, the story problem talks about? No, so that in itself already tells me that is incorrect. That is not a correct um, way to solve this one. So no, let's move on. The next one, letter D, okay, there's seven, and they went ahead and they're making groups, right? So. Does seven and three make 10? Seven, eight, nine, 10. Does it make 10? Yes, right, so that's correct. And then three, remember we stop at eight? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that five? Yes, right, and if I add it together, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, does it give me 15? Yes, so this one is correct. Okay, now let's look at this one over here. Can you see it? Yes, you can see it. Okay, so here again, seven plus eight equals 15. That is the, the problem that we're working on. And if I circle this, does it give me 10? Yes, it gives me 10, right? And then if I add my five, one, two, three, four, five, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Is that correct? Yes, right? So 7 plus 8 equals 15. That is correct. Now let's look at our last one. At our last one, you should be able to look at it and say, mm, something's off, right? Because here's my 7, and there's my 7 circles, and then 8, and there's my 8. And what are they doing that we said we couldn't do? They are grabbing from here and here to make 10. And they're supposed to get a whole first and then add the rest. Okay, so that one is not correct. So here we, sh we have A, D, and E that are done correctly. Okay, so that was for page 210. Below it on number two, you would have to fix the work that was incorrect. So you would get these three that are not circled and do it correctly like, like these over here. Okay, so you're going to do the same thing. Just draw it and circle and go ahead and um, do it correctly. So here, let's say the drawing is like that, but you would do whole, and there's seven, eight, nine, ten. And that would be the correct one right here. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's the corrected version. But they want you to go ahead and draw it again, right? And here... It would be, it wouldn't be 10 in here and then 8. It would have been 7 and then it was going to look like this one. Okay, so on, on number 2 at the bottom, you just fix the ones that are incorrect. For your work to do at home, it is a story, two story problems. And you're going to go ahead and do the same thing. Work them out, draw your pictures. But then they want you to write a statement to answer the question. So what does that mean? It's The question is asking you how many cupcakes were made for the party. So at the bottom, you would put um, whatever the answer is. 18 cupcakes were made for the party. So basically answering the question at the end in a sentence, okay? So for both of them, you would answer in a statement, okay? So that was for math. We're gonna go ahead and move along to science. And for science, um, we're gonna be working with butterflies, which, or we're gonna be learning about butterflies. So if you wanna pause here, it's a good time to pause and maybe go ahead and work on math, or you can continue watching and then um, work on whichever you want next, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started, and we're on page 39 in your lesson plan. And we're going to be working on week three, day one, which is butterflies. There is a fabulous video in Brain Pop Jr. about butterflies, right? So you can watch that, get some background information. There's also page 306 in your binder. And I went ahead and wrote it here. Page 306 in your binder also gives you a lot of background information. And then um, we're going to ask you to do an activity. But before that, I just wanted to give you some facts. Um, a good book to read that is a fiction story that teaches you about the life cycle of a butterfly would be The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Okay, so I wish I had that book to share with y'all, but it's on YouTube if you would like to listen to it. There's one with a song that you can listen. So that would be a great opportunity for your child to get interested, right? But, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you another book that I brought with me. And in this book, it has a lot of information about butterflies. So, of course, it's a nonfiction book. And I'm going to go ahead and show you some awesome pictures that are in here. But then I'm going to also give you information that is on page 306. Okay. So, first of all, your child needs to know that a butterfly is an insect. Okay. So, it's an insect. It's not It's not. We don't just say, oh, it's a bug. Yes, it's a bug, but it's an insect. And it has the three major parts that a bug normally has, right? So it has three body segments, which is the head, the thorax, and the abdominum. So here we have a picture of a butterfly, right? A close-up. There's all kinds of butterflies. Maybe here, down here in the valley, we kind of just see a few right but there's all kinds of butterflies so um, what I wanted you all to know is that um, they all have two wings right and they all have different kinds of bright colors or patterns so not all of them are the same 
and they have um, something called a proboscis that sucks up nectar and flowers. And they kind of call it like a, a straw that sucks up all the nectar from the flowers, okay? So this part right here are the scales that are very tiny. You really can't see them. And when they fall off, it's like dust. It's not, you're not gonna see a scale and say, oh, that belongs to a butterfly, right? Cause they're, it's like um, dust. Okay, so uh, a lot of butterflies tend to camouflage, right? Because other insects or other animals might try and eat them. So some of them kind of start looking like their surroundings. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and go over the, the life cycle. Okay, so here we have the life cycle of the butterfly. Okay, so it all starts with an egg, and I'll show you a picture right now of all the different ways that an egg can look like, and then it becomes a young caterpillar, and then a caterpillar, and caterpillars don't all look the same. So some of you might think, oh, they're the green ones. I'll show you some pictures right now of the different types of caterpillars that there's out there. And then it becomes a chrysalis. So a misconception, a lot of our kids, they say, oh, he goes into a cocoon, right? But remember, a moth is the one that forms a cocoon. A butterfly creates a chrysalis, right? And then it becomes the life cycle. I mean, I'm sorry, the adult. I started reading the top. It's the adult, okay? So it's the egg, the caterpillar, right? This one's kind of together. And the reason I'm telling you is because the activity only has four spots, right? So this one is still a caterpillar, whether it's a young or an older one. They're a caterpillar, then it's a chrysalis, and then it's the adult. Okay, so here are some caterpillars hatching from the eggs. And here are the different types of cat or eggs you might have seen. Okay, so they're all different. They don't all look the same. And here they are hatching. And remember that a caterpillar sheds its skin because it's growing. Here the, cat the butterfly is laying its eggs. And of course, here they eat and eat so that they can change into a butterfly. And here you see the different stages. You might have seen a caterpillar hanging like this, right? And then little by little, it starts to make its chrysalis to the point where all you can see is the chrysalis. This one right here is a monarch. So you can see the wings in there. And remember I said they had a proboscis. That's the one right there. It looks like a big tongue. Okay, and the rest just basically shows how beautiful they are, how different they look. Get this one. Okay, so that was just very basic information about a butterfly. What we want you to do today is you're going to be doing page 308 to there, and it looks like this. So these are leaves, right, different leaves. And what you're going to do is you're going to label each leaf different stages of the butterfly cycle. So, of course, you would put the egg, right, the caterpillar, the chrysalis, and the butterfly. And it says to go ahead and write a sentence about the stage and draw a picture. Okay, so here you would draw an egg, and then here you tell us what's happening. The egg is laid in a leaf, right? And then over here you might put caterpillar. The caterpillar hatches from the egg and starts to eat, right? And then over here you would put the chrysalis. Okay, so um, the caterpillar hangs from a leaf and starts to form its chrysalis. And then at the end, butterfly. The butterfly hatches from the chrysalis and 
it starts all over again, right? So then it says to go ahead and cut them out, color, cut them out, and then hang them from a piece of yarn. And so you can see the different um, stages and it becomes a life cycle, right? Okay, so those were our lessons for today. Hopefully you understood them and you it kind of clarified any kind of questions that you had. But again, if you didn't, feel free to call me or call Mrs. Rojas or a teacher, right? And they could um, clarify any kind of questions you might have. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully everything's going great and we will see you soon. Bye.